the history of the gospel took a very different turn after two events that occurred in the book of Acts. One of them was the conversion of Paul, Paul's conversion in chapter 9, and soon the TV series Paul is coming up, Universe and Record TV, soon, not that soon, but soon. Prepare yourself. You have never seen the story of Paul as you will see in this exclusive TV series on Universe and Record TV. One of the events was Paul's conversion because it was the conversion of the one who was a church's persecutor. It was a turning point within Israel and without especially without. In the other event, which was pivotal in the preaching of the gospel, was on the following chapter, chapter 10, when Peter visits the house of a centurion called Cornelius. I won't go into details because both stories are so rich in details. As you've heard, it can turn into a TV series, books and books. But let's focus on one point that Peter spoke in the house of Cornelius to him and his family members and close friends who were gathered to hear the word from this young Jew, a former fisher, now a fisher of men. Peter announcing to those present there spoke about everything the disciples, his colleagues and friends have witnessed in the three years that they walked with the Lord Jesus from Galilee to Judea to Jerusalem and they saw the Lord Jesus crucified, dead, buried and later resurrected. And Peter testified of this saying the following, that after Jesus had resurrected, on verse 42 of chapter 10, and Jesus commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. See that Jesus commanded the disciples to preach to the people and testify that he, Jesus, was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. Our Lord Jesus is judge of the living and the dead. And this brings to everyone, whether they believe in the Bible or not, they need to decide. When you hear this information that Jesus was ordained by God, judge of the living and the dead, you need to do something with this information. Either you believe that he is judge he would judge living and dead, or you don't. And this choice, your decision, will impact your life. Because remember, if this is true, then it doesn't depend on your belief. If I believe that my shirt is black or not, its color won't change. If I believe that the air that I breathe is O2, it won't change the molecular form of the air. Belief will not change what I believe or not. If Jesus is judge, whether I believe in him or not, I will be judged. This is important for you to know. If he's not judge, if all this is a lie, 
It doesn't matter if you believe it or not, because if you believed, you believed in a lie. If you didn't believe, you lost nothing. Here is the great risk the many take. Is the risk of losing a lot if they are wrong and lose little if they are right. Actually, lose nothing to win a lot if they are right. If you are correct that Jesus is judge of the living and the dead, you will win a lot. What will you win? You win the forgiveness. On the following verse, he says, to him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. In other words, if you believe that Jesus is the judge, will be the one who will judge, that he has power not only to judge, but to forgive those who believe in him. If you believe in him, you will win everything. You will win heaven, literally. But if you don't, you will lose a lot, so much. You will lose your life for eternity. Hence, we all must do something with this information. Yes, you need to do something with this information. Even if you say, I won't do anything with this information. This is already a choice. I'm not doing anything with this information. For me, I don't believe in that. This is just a story told by men to control people. This is a decision that you are making, which I say it's not intelligent and responsible decision because it's about life and death. It deals with what happens after death. And we all know intimately God placed within us a belief that there's something beyond this life. If you are intelligent and wise, you, at the very least, you seek to know who this Jesus was, what he did here, why he did what he did, and what he did was for, and what you have to do with all that, and what you will do with all that. At the very least, you owe this responsibility to yourself, because it is a fact that Jesus existed. Witnesses are numerous. Documents are numerous. They prove the existence of the Lord Jesus. They prove his teachings, his death. They prove his resurrection. It's all in documents, in many documents, many witnesses. It was not just one or two, but many people who were ready to pay with their own lives for what they saw and lived and witnessed. At the very least, you owe to yourself this responsibility to know who this Jesus was, who one day would judge you, whether you are alive or dead. You will appear before his throne and his court. And then, how will you appear? Guilty? as a defendant, without any lawyer, solicitor, or justification that can be acceptable, or will you appear before him with faith in him who assured you the forgiveness of your sins by his name? It's what is written. Through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Thus, the judge himself has the power to forgive those who believe in his name. Again, to believe in his name, it's not just saying, I believe in Jesus. Because the devil also believes in Jesus. This believe here is to live by what he says, is to live in practice of what he says. If you don't, you don't believe. There's no point of saying that you do if in practice you show the contrary. So this 
changed the history of the gospel because up until that moment the gospel was restricted to the Jews in Israel. But when Peter preached to Cornelius, who was a centurion, a Roman soldier, an important soldier at Rome court, that spread and God wanted to spread the gospel to everyone beyond the borders of Israel and there the gospel reached Europe, Africa, Asia, it reached thus, it comes to me and it comes to you today and you must do something with this information. How do you want to meet Jesus? As a defendant before the judge or do you want to find him as someone forgiven, one who has no more debts because your life and faith in him as long as you lived here showed that you truly believed in him with decisions and actions. Dear friends, make a intelligent decision because if I'm wrong, you won't lose anything. But if I'm right, you lose everything, including eternal life with God. So don't play around with this. Don't worry about anything but this with all your strength and dedication as you should do it with this topic that deals with eternity, which is more important than parents, children, job, school, studies, anything that will pass soon in this world. Take care of this topic that you may have peace within and the assurance of forgiveness and salvation. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.